What's up, YouTube? It's Biblical Truther. My wife worked on this map today, and I did some of the stuff within the map um, once I got home, but I didn't get a whole bunch because, uh, as it turns out, Latin is pretty hard to translate because there's a little bit of French mixed in there as well. Um, but let's get right to it because this is uh, yet another mind-blowing uh, thing. So right up here at the top she was able to get all this translated right here and uh, a lot of this stuff you know if you went to the link in the last video and looked at all this um some of it is kind of self-explanatory uh as far as the um closeness between english and some of these words you can pretty much guess what they are but anyway let's show you what it translates to says Jerusalem such that it seems that it began to be of David and continued from then on until it was raised by the Babylonians and such that it was rebaptized and amplified by the Jews returned from the uh, returning from the captivity of Babylon if only it was completely ruined by Titus son of Vels Bafian, which uh, I think it's spelled with an S rather than an F, um, the Roman emperor. Let me show you who he is real quick. Um, it is none other than Titus, this guy right here. Uh, he's mentioned down there in the Bible, isn't he? But anyway, it says, now so that this figure may appear to several nations. Um it has been drawn up with the Latin names of the places of the city in addition to the letters, which will be explained below, which we had those letters in the page to which the whole must be reported. This is the third chapter of Nehemiah. So when you go and look at the third chapter of Nehemiah, um, it's basically the rebuilding of the temple, and it actually shows which gates are repaired by who um, all the way through to the end this whole chapter is actually the rebuilding of this temple um, that's pretty crazy huh? we just found a map that straight out the bible <laughs> it's amazing um, but that's not all that's not all we're gonna go to uh texas now and uh did you know that there's a palestine texas well, I want to read my phone again. Um, I had a subscriber leave a comment earlier, and I really don't want to butcher this name, but it looks like Trishel Sturgeon. Uh, she says, Little Egypt here in South Illinois. Carbondale is the X to the eclipse, you know, the, the solar eclipse in 2024 that's going to cross us again, making the big X. One idea that the name stems from a cold winter late into the season and then frost, destroying many crops. Uh, destroying many crops so the people from the north were driven to the south to purchase corn, grain, etc. to survive like Jacob had to do in the biblical times. Well, Jacob was already in Egypt and it was Abraham and his brothers who sold him that had to go down there and you know, buy food because it was so bad. Uh, I think I even had that story pulled up, but it might have been on my phone. But anyway, you can check that out for yourself. It's in Genesis 48, I believe. But there is a Palestine, Texas. And I want to read this article, a little bit of it anyway. It says, by the 19th century, religious Christian settlers who chose such names to express their spiritual attachment to the land and the people of the Bible when they thought of Palestine, they were called the, king, uh, the Jewish kingdom of ancient times. In their prayers, they prayed for the return of the Jews to the Holy Land. A Baptist minister named Daniel Parker brought 25 families from Illinois to settle in eastern Texas in the 1830s, which is right about the same time the Alamo battle took place. When they formally established the town of Palestine in 1846, they named it after Reverend Parker's hometown in Palestine, Illinois. That name has been chosen because the beauty of that part of Illinois reminded its settlers of the land of milk and honey, Palestine. 
according to the official count by the Crawford County, Illinois uh, Historical Society. Americans were aware that Palestine had some Arab residents. Mark Twain had mentioned them in his account of his visit to the Holy Land and Innocents Abroad and had Herman Melville in his famous Chlorel, a poem in the pilgrimage into the Holy Land. But it was common knowledge that the Arab population of Palestine was relatively small and unsettled. H. Allen Tupper Jr. wrote in the New York Times in 1896, having, after having ridden on a horse, uh, horseback more than 400 miles through Palestine and Syria, that virtually the only local people he encountered were merchant men with a long camel, uh, long camel trains, and wild uh, Bedouin tribes that reside in one locality not more than two months. Moreover, the Arab residents in the 19th century Palestine did not consider themselves Palestinians. They uh, regarded Palestine not as a separate country, but as a southern part of Syria. And this is where it kind of gets into a little bit of, of the narrative here. Um, as the Arab scholar Zien N. Zien wrote in 1973, the world in which the Arabs and Turks lived together was, before the end of the 19th century, politically and non-national world, the vast majority of the Muslim Arabs, um, Arabs <laughs> did not show any nationalist or separatist tendencies except when the Turkish leaders themselves, after 1908, asserted their own nationalism. If there had been a conflict between the Arab and Jewish residents in Palestine in the 1800s, the original residents of Palestine, Texas, undoubtedly would have sided with the Jews. Um, whose claim to the land is clear from the Bible that Christians and Jews both cherish. It is for the same reason that Bible-believing Christians today, probably including more than a few residents of Palestine, Texas, and Palestine, Illinois, constitute one of the major uh, sources of pro-Israel sentiment in the United States. And this morning, I told you guys I was late for work because uh, we got up kind of digging into some of this stuff. Uh, but Palestine is not the only thing in uh, you know, biblical names that is in um, um, Texas. So I wanted to read this. This is, uh, it gets into, I believe, some like comments and stuff, but it's it's about this article right here. And we found this highly suspicious, uh, well, may, wait a minute, this may not be the one about, let's see. Uh, this one may not be. Oh man, don't tell me it's still. Uh, nope. 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 <sighs> Looks like I don't have that one. I'm not sure. But anyway, there was also one about a uh, rocket Columbia. I want to say I had that one pulled up. Let me read this for a second. But anyway, fact that the space oh this is it, huh? The fact that the space shuttle Columbia broke apart in the vicinity of a Texas town named Palestine has been the subject of much conversation in the Middle East. In Cairo, the New York Times reports the average cafe denizen noted the presence of an Israeli astronaut on board as well as the reports that it apparently began crumbling over Palestine, Texas, and concluded that Allah was punishing America for supporting Israel. In the Gulf Kingdom, known as the United Arab Emirates, a newspaper columnist expressed his hope that perhaps the sight of the Columbia shuttles crashing in the town of Palestine, Texas, reminds the Israeli people of the daily tragedy of the Palestinians. And on the Islamic website, Al Jafar, uh, one... Shaikh Dr. Ali Al Tamimi remarked that when CNN announced at the beginning that the shuttle fell near the uh, city of Palestine, Texas, I said to myself, Allah is great, thus Allah willing will America fall in Palestine. So what would make all these world leaders, you know, supposedly halfway across the world have any interest um, in making any type of newspaper columns about Palestine, Texas. Um, I said whether the shuttle exploded precisely over the town of Palestine or merely in its vicinity, it's not clear, but that is 
be that as it may, the tragic spotlight now shining upon Palestine, Texas, naturally leaves some Americans curious as to why it has such an unusual name. The answer is that it's not unusual at all. In Texas, there are also towns named Hebronville and Joshua. There's a Hebron in North Dakota and a Sinai in South Dakota, Jerusalem in Arkansas, two Shilohs in Ohio, Jericho in Vermont, a Bethlehem, as well as a Nazareth in Pennsylvania, a Zion in Maryland. Nearly every state in the Union has one or more towns named after biblical sites and or individuals, although there are more than a thousand biblically named towns from coast to coast. That's not because residents of these regions have some special sympathy for the Palestinian Arabs. Uh, towns like Palestine were established in the 19th century religious Christian settlers who chose such names to express their spiritual attachment to the land and people of the Bible. Well, maybe they did have a connection to them because they were there, the real there. When they thought of Palestine, they recalled the Jewish kingdom of ancient times in their prayers. They prayed for the return of the Jews to the Holy Land. Um, he's getting into a little more of that other article I just read. Uh, gets into, you know, Mark Twain and, and all that stuff. So here's some comments from some of the people, I guess, that re uh, read this article. And it said it's pronounced Palestine. You know, somebody, you know we got those in our, in our uh, body who... You know, are those ones who know it all and have no open mind to stuff like this. So I appreciate y'all even considering it because I'm not saying I'm right um, whatsoever. But if this is true, this is monumental. Um, but it says, yes, we have a Moscow and a Star City, Arkansas as well. I live in Monticello. I guess names are largely misleading. Uh, this person said, every time I see the name Palestine, Texas, I remember a girl I worked with 30 years ago. The reason I remember, she was drop-dead gorgeous. I wonder if she descended from a group who founded the town. Um, we have an a Arab, Alabama. This is a uh, Hahira, Georgia. It is home of Ray Stevens, who liked to sing about Ahab the Arab. <laughs> I served in the Army 30 years ago with a Signal Corps captain from Palestine, Texas. And this guy says, I lived in Palestine, Texas for eight years. Whenever I was expecting mail from Europe, especially the UK, I would instruct the sender to put USA in large letters after the zip code. If not, the mail would get routed through Palestine or Palestinian Authority before getting to me. Once someone from Israel sent me mail. There was a note in Hebrew on the cover. I had a friend translate the words roughly read, don't be a puts and send this Yasser's place. The Goyim I'm sending this to is in Texas. The United States is an all right guy. Since I was doing quite a bit of freelance writing and dealing with European publishers, I almost put a P.O. box in Eckhart, Texas, 12 miles down, just to avoid the confusion. Well, that's odd, isn't it? Why would they even be confused when they're on opposite ends of the world? Just saying, could it be that that one over there just sprung up out of nowhere and they were already, you know, used to sending it to the real Palestine? I don't know. Which do you think would be most likely to change its name, Palestine or Paris, Texas? Um, and then this shuttle was falling apart over Nazareth first. So there's Nazareth, Texas, which is actually up in the panhandle, kind of close to um, Oklahoma. And I believe that is uh, North Mexico. Uh, over in that region, so it's kind of close to the four corners, right? <laughs> um, and this is about the 25 families from Illinois in the 1930s. Uh, this was no doubt the famous Baptist Nosy Parker. And it goes on talking about, um, if you go on the SH-19 from Palestine in about 30 miles, you will go through Athens, Texas. And then you'll hit Canton, Texas. And then you'll hit Paris, Texas. And then you'll hit Sulphur Springs, Texas. Um, <laughs> I mean, Texas is loaded with these places, right? I just don't find that coincidence. Uh, especially that, you know, the Alamo of all things, uh, I would have never on my own um, came up with that one. But then we have a Lebanon in New Hampshire. Down the 30, 30, uh, 30 miles from me is Mecca. 
Mecca, California, I believe that is. And we have Trinity Rivers just west of Palestine and Texas. Um, so it's crazy, man. But uh, I also wanted to show you this right here. This is actually in Illinois. And I wanted to show you some of the names of these counties. This was from 1864. So it was a little after the uh, Civil Wars and all that going down. So we have Milan. Margarita, Perkins, Grothen, Oxford, Milan, uh, Huron, Berlin, Florence, Vermilion, and then over here in Berlin Heights, uh, there's an awful lot of Noah stuff in here. Wonder why that is, huh? Got Noah Hill, Noah Hill. Um, but funny enough, you know, Illinois shares the border of the Great Lakes with Canada. And, uh, have you guys ever heard of this one? There's an awful lot of Noah's Ark stuff associated with Canada. Uh, British Columbia. I just read one about the Inuit up close to Alaska saying that the Ark was up there trapped in the ice. Um, it was kind of not what i was looking for in terms of noah's ark up that way but there was a connection that it was somewhere up north around the uh you know arctic region so that's funny if there was nothing up there why would all you know north canada be talking about noah's ark this is the article right here uh noah's ark and the new atlantis that i was reading and it was just kind of ridiculous they talk about the inuit stories that they were interviewing these inuit indians which i've been told were more like the hopi from a previous age than ours and if you don't know what i'm talking about um you may have heard the the, the debate between genesis 1 and genesis 2 like Cleck teaches, Jonathan Cleck teaches that Genesis 1 was the fallen angels create man and woman. And then Genesis 2 is the Lord God comes in and creates Adam to supplant, you know, the world that they created. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. I think Genesis 1 is the actual creation story. And there's no telling how many um, civilizations between uh, the first creation and Adam. But there are many books out there that talk about uh, at least three others that I know of, uh, Lemuria, Atlantis, and I um, can't remember the other one right off the top of my head. But anyway, there's many books that back that up. It's not just myth, you know, like Greek mythology is actually history with all the uh, animal human hybrid type situations. So it's not far fetched to um, to see how this this. This whole deception unfolds. It's, it's wild. But I have a little more stuff to show. So I think it was about a week, week and a half ago. You know, I get, I got two Bible apps on my phone and I get daily verses. And uh, I didn't even think about this verse till I got home today. And my wife reminded me about it because I mentioned in the video, I think it was the one this morning or it might have been yesterday that, or the day before yesterday, whenever it was. Um, that I have um, have run across a lot of this information early on in my awakening process, if you will. And I didn't know at the time, you know, I guess my spirit wasn't comfortable enough to consider some of these things because I was kind of still set in my ways and not really entertaining a whole lot of new things. But this popped up on my phone and I don't always check them, but sometimes when I get that notification, I just, you know, it's like I don't even use my own hand. It's like, bam, you got to read that one. Well, about a week ago, this was this is the one I got, John 16, 12, and I had to come home and share that with my wife. I was like, man, something's going on because I'm a I'm an insomniac. You know, I stay up real late. I only get two, three hours of sleep as it is. Uh, it's almost 11 o'clock now. But um, <clears throat> I just don't get much sleep, and I can't go to sleep at night. So uh, I use some over-the-counter medicine to try and help that. So I was thinking, well, it says, I have yet many things to say unto you, 
but you cannot bear them yet. So I'm thinking, well, maybe because I, I haven't had a dream in a long time. I uh, haven't had a word upon waking up, you know, as many times as I used to. It's been quite a while. So I figured, well, man, I might need to quit uh, taking the melatonin and stuff to try and help me sleep. Maybe I'm sleeping too deep. So I quit taking those <clears throat> and uh, didn't have a dream, didn't have a word, uh, not while I was sleeping or just getting up. But um, throughout the day for the last week, I have been inundated with all this information and um it was just 1612 that came across but 1613 says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come so when i came home she reminded me about this verse and i was like holy crap no wonder i've been just getting just bombarded with information because i think the night that i got this or you know the day i got it that night when i prayed i was like bring it and i'm ready for it and i got i got what i was asking for um but i wanted to show you this too as far as other people's research a plain truth.info uh he calls america Jerusalem. I don't exactly know why. I haven't seen many of the videos that he's put out tying, uh, you know, America to the Holy Land, but he has made that connection as well. And uh, he does a lot of the mud flood coverage too. And um, his uh, ability to discern things is quite remarkable for most. Uh, but that's definitely a good one to go to and check his stuff out. But I wanted to show you this. I had, it's blank, obviously because I sent it to my wife this morning and it was a long article and it was talking about how, and this was in 2021 and it was talking about how the 10 tribes of Israel were in the Illinois area and it listed all 10 tribes and said that they were pushed out over to um, Puget Sound. Yeah. Puget Sound in Washington state. So I was like, Huh. Well, I'm definitely going to share that tonight. So I sent it to my wife. And then when I got home, I tried to pull it up on my phone. I went to, you know, the text messages and I could show you where I sent it. If you don't believe me, because, you know, some people are like that. But um, I don't know if you can. Uh, that one on the bottom. So anyway, Golden Retriever. Zichter or whatever uh, tribal map and it had a bunch of links to maps at the bottom but it was mainly a big article and it was talking about the 10 tribes it talked about Joshua being defeated up around uh, Canada Illinois Michigan area um, so I thought that was kind of curious that this article put out in 2021 will be talking about all of this in America so I sent it to her and I was going to show you guys but when I got home and I tried to pull it up it's no longer available. Hmm, go figure, right? So then I got to thinking, well, let me go check out Washington State. So I got Google Map here, and I just put a couple pins on some things. And um, here's Putrid Sound right here, way over here on the other side of this. Uh, I think this is, I'm not sure what this place is. But anyway, we have a Moscow. And then right here, <laughs> We have um, Moses' Lake. Okay. And here's a, oh, look, there's Smyrna. I didn't even see that. There's you, a Smyrna. Um, Columbia River. You know, that name's uh, familiar as well. But when you get over here, look how pretty this land is, man. That is, you know. I would take that as a promise, man, land. I mean, look at the lakes and the hills. I mean, there's just hundreds and hundreds of lakes out here. Um, there's also a volcano right here. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there's a few spots. Even in California, there was a couple of these. They all, uh, this is Future Sound. Here's like, you know, Danville, like the tribe of Danville. And then you got Issaquah, kind of like the tribe of Issachar, uh, sitting right here by Seattle which makes you wonder why Seattle is so focused on these days. 
Then right over here, you have Lake Cushman, um, you know, kind of like the land of Cush. Not saying that's what it is. But then you have Mount Olympus. Ain't that where the uh, Greek gods always uh, claimed their crib was? thought that was pretty funny. And you got a Mount Vernon over here. I don't remember if that was in the Bible or not. I can't recall it. But I did go ahead and stick a little stamp on there just because. But right above that, we have Florence. Another Florence. And then we have Saturna Island. Hmm. And then, you know... Um, forget what book it is but uh, when a, the Assyrians came and took uh, you know control of Israel they brought them to the Caucasus Mountains and I thought this was um, pretty dang close uh, Caucasus it doesn't call it a mountain range but again you know back in the day uh, California was an island so this all up here may not have been underwater at the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, you got a Caucasus over here. Uh, let's see what else. I think that was all. I didn't venture too far away from uh, from Washington. But I thought that was pretty wild, man. And oh, look, we have a Salem down here by Portland. Uh, we all know what Salem's fa famous for, right? Uh, but yeah, man, it's like all the coast over here seems to be uh, documented. And maybe someone can find that. You know, like I said, I don't have much time to do a bunch of this. But then you got the Moab Desert. Uh, that's definitely in the Bible. Um, and I just don't see all these people... Um, wanting to name everything after the Bible. Uh, not when you're drawing horse and buggies and it's hard to, you know, get information. But if you're coming out of a millennial kingdom, maybe you would want to keep that fresh in your mind and be wanting to name everything, you know, after all the information you learn. Who knows? Who knows? And look, there's your four corners. Bam. Right there in the bottom. One more thing I thought about while I was looking over here in, in the Oregon and uh, Washington area. I was thinking, you know, the Israelites when they were sneaking up on all these camps. And I, I do believe Cush was one of them, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be, you know. Um, but definitely the land of Canaan. And that's one thing I didn't find. Uh, but when the scouts went out to check out these these uh, places that, you know, the Lord was taking them through and kind of doing away with these uh, giants and whatnot, um, they were talking about how they were as tall as cedar trees. So, you know, over here and all this right here is actually redwood trees. So I was like, redwoods do kind of resemble cedars. So I looked it up. It is the western red cedar. These are redwood trees. So I was like, hmm, wonder how tall they get. Oh, 200 feet. Could you imagine seeing a giant as tall as one of these cedar trees? Because the way they talked about it in the Bible, it was huge. Made them look like grasshoppers. Because if you've ever been up here, and I actually have been to Oregon and seen the redwoods. I even drove the car through the one that's all hollowed out and stuff. Uh, these things are massive. Like I said, we drove a car through the one. They have a picture of it where a station wagon, a full-size old school, like a priest station wagon, uh, was still not as long as this tree was wide. So these things are huge. So if they are, in fact, in the Washington, Oregon area, you know, if they were pushed out over to that area for whatever reason, um, then they were very familiar with these cedar trees. Uh, and I do believe in that article I just read, there was a Lebanon out in this area too. So that would be the cedars of Lebanon, right? Just saying, man, this stuff keeps flowing and flowing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's mind boggling, mind boggling. Oh, and then I have this right here. <laughs> Like I said, then this is some stuff that my wife found. Uh, 
just looking at Texas, these are some YouTube videos about uh, some of its mainstream. Because, you know, they got to get their hand in there. The Smithsonian's got to go in there and tell you what's, you know, uh, archaeological and what ain't and all this type of stuff. Uh, and then they take what they tell you, you know, is not worth anything and leave you with the worthless. <laughs> anyway, so we have these uh, America's Unearthed. That's actually a pretty good show. You should like watching that. Ancient ruins buried beneath a Texas town. And it, in the 1800s, it said that the city of Rockwall, Texas, has a mystery. Uh, has a mystery it's been trying to solve. And apparently, there was a farmer out there doing some farming and was wanting to, uh, you know, build a structure. And he started building and um, actually dug up a wall that happened to be extremely tall. Uh, and they also found giants within these walls. Um, I don't remember which one. Uh, I didn't really watch much of these, just kind of to get the gist of it. But um, it's crazy, man. There's so much stuff here, like the Grand Canyons, you know, the military guards, the Grand Canyons, because they say they found Egyptian mummies and there's pyramids and all these temple complexes built into the rock, just like they show us over there in the east, right? But we have all the same stuff that they show us over there right here in America that you can't get to because it's either uh, a protected national forest or the military's guarding it. Um, but there's still stuff out there for us to find that actually backs this theory up almost without a doubt. But I'm hesitant to say without a doubt, but do I feel I'm correct? Yes. So then we got this uh, enchanted rock. This is in Texas as well. Um, let's see if I can see just that's really straight what's, what's... Look, i don't want to play this because you know how you know youtube is actually giving you strikes uh whether this guy wanted to strike me for playing his stuff or not um they will definitely strike me just because i'm already targeted and possibly with that website just disappearing before i even got home today uh it's very possible very possible that they already looking at this stuff. This I, I would imagine if this is all 100% correct, they don't want this information out. They don't want us to know this. And one of my subscribers told me today that he is actually from Texas, close to um, the Alamo. And just recently, or you know, in the last, I don't remember exactly how long ago, but he said that the uh, military has moved in and took control of the Alamo and has been doing some renovations and destructions uh, with it. But, you know, first thing I thought of, well, the enemy knows his time is short, right? So uh, if that is remnants of the temple, then that would make sense that they would try and get their hands on it, you know, and run whoever had uh, control over it, which was the Daughters of Liberty, I think he said, or the Daughters of the Republic, yeah. Daughters of the Republic, they've been kicked out and the uh, place has been seized and they have been destructing and remodifying things for quite some time. But uh, I don't seem to see a description. Hmm. Too bad. But. Um, So there's quite a few videos about this oh, ancient giants in Texas. Uh, and actually, I believe there is some serious cave systems that run through Texas as well. And we know about the uh, Afghan giant uh, that the military confronted over there. But there's rumors that these these caves connect across the earth, even under the oceans. But I cannot prove that. So uh, it is what it is. But this is about the uh, mysterious rock wall, and you see how they always go to throw the, the, the aliens in there. Um, so there's a lot of history, a lot of documented history uh, in Texas, which just makes me wonder, and uh, 
more so um, believe that what I've come across is factual. So, yeah. Kind of crazy, man. I'm actually going to go back and watch all of these videos because I'm curious and probably won't believe the narrative. And uh, if you've been doing your own studies, you'll be able to see through these lies, too, uh, and see these things for what they are. The ancient peoples had technology that they're hiding from us, obviously, but my mind can't even think this stuff up, how they uh, made granite rock and, and limestone malleable because like in Pompeii when you see all the bricks that have the rounded edges but they're not square so they fit together square they're like one kind of dips into the other stone well uh, another guy I was watching a while back said that they had talked to the people about these ancient ruins and they told them that they learned how to work these stones from a bird because there were birds that were taking these twigs from a specific tree and they would go up there and wipe the, I forget what kind of acid this tree produced, but they would wipe it on the stone and then they would just sit there and peck holes until they had them and that's built into solid rock, granite rock. Um, so that's crazy because granite is one of the hardest stones out there. But uh, yeah, they take this this certain tree and they pour it over the stone and it just softens the stone almost like clay. And then you just sit there and mold it. That's crazy. So uh, if that's true, then the ancient aliens theory of all this, you know, crazy technology. Uh, you throw that out the window anyway, but uh, that kind of debunks their their super technology, you know, out of this world stuff. But, yeah, man, go through there. And I believe there's a ton of uh, old newspaper articles about giants, you know, giants with horns. Um, many photos you can still find of giants coming out of Texas, Arizona, New Mexico area. So <sighs> there's my presentation, man. This is crazy. But there's also, uh, let's see. Picos River and the Rio Grande. There's some ancient, uh, ancient megalithic cities down there. Um, I, I mentioned the Enchanted Rock. I'm gonna go watch that video fully. Uh, and then this uh, rock wall in Rockwall, Texas, that they found, they say is six stories tall and 20 miles square. I don't remember, um, and that's up by Dallas, so it's nowhere near San Antonio, but, you know, there were a lot of walled cities back in biblical times, so there's no telling what city that is, but they say they found seven and eight foot tall giants there, so yeah, go look it up, you know, look these up on YouTube and check them out, and you can come to your own conclusion too as to recorded archaeological finds versus, um, this thing that I'm proposing now. <laughs> uh, but like I said, I would never, I was basically asking, how's Jerusalem, Texas tie in? And that's what I heard. Remember the Alamo. <sighs> Take it how you want to, you know. Uh, and also the yellow brick road, wasn't that in the Bible too? Uh, this, this, um, Yellow Brick Road, there's an ancient temple found in Texas, and the Yellow Brick Road. Hmm. Pretty, pretty crazy, man. So I need you guys' help. You know, I think we all need as the body uh, to dig into this, man, because it's just too many coincidences that it becomes mathematically impossible, as Q used to say. Because <laughs> I was caught up in that movie, too, but Anyway, yeah, I will get to another video I have that brought me to all this in the first place uh, with a certain uh, T. Um, you know, this man uh, and his lineage, um, because the Bible calls the AC the Assyrian, and I'm going to connect the dots for you on that as well. So, 
that's all I have for you guys tonight. Hopefully, um, y'all are doing some digging too, because like me, I was too excited to even uh, sleep last night, so I had to make that video, and then I was up to almost one o'clock. Uh, just thinking about this, man, like this is amazing. If this is true, if this is provable fact, which the uh, you know my my friend over there, John the Revelator is his name. He, he comments on most of my videos, but he said he's been studying the Alamo for, you know, 30, 40 years. Uh, I forget exactly how long he said, but many years. And he's just about come to the same conclusion. He thinks that, uh, you know, I'm 100% correct in what I'm proposing here. So that's pretty interesting being that he's from there and knows the history uh, and knows the lore of the, you know, cities and towns around there. So... As we're learning, lore is not always lore, but actually truth. So I just want to put this together for you guys. Just some more interesting stuff revolving around this. Uh, and the fact that we are tracking, you know, the 10 tribes, actually all 12 tribes, because I think Benjamin and Judah was actually in Canada. And I got another subscriber that sent me some information that I'm going to be looking into as far as Canada goes, too. Um, so we'll we'll see how that goes and how it pans out. I'm not saying they are from there, you know, but it's possible, you know, that that you know they were the northern kingdom. So that would put them if, you know, America was the ten tribe location, then that would put them to up in Canada, right? We'll see how that investigation goes, man. I'm gonna let y'all go. It's after eleven. Love you guys.